Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 697. In this game I started off with uh, d4 and my opponent played uh, e6. So let's see, well let's take a look at this in the opening book. Um, e6 is the third choice here. It's actually a pretty flexible move um, because, well the main replies here are either uh, e4 or uh, c4. So you, you let in a way white choose the opening, but if uh, white goes for e4 then you can play the French defense. And if white goes with uh, c4, then you can play knight f6 and get a, uh, a Nimzo Indian or uh, that family of openings. So, um, you know, black is prepared for whatever white uh, does here. I like to play white against the French defense when I get the chance, so I go with e4. And putting two pawns in the center is sort of uh, logical when you get the chance. Uh, he goes d5, so we have transposed into the French. And now he plays the move c5. This is actually known as the uh, martial defense, one of those uh, uh, many lines, many opening lines named after the uh, American champion, uh, Marshall. And uh, unlike the martial gambit, this one is not particularly good. In fact, um, white basically wins a pawn, um, but you have to play um, e takes d5. I took this in the wrong order. Basically, you need to weaken the d pawn first, and then you can take on c5, and then this pawn is hanging. So if, uh, Black, for example, captures this pawn, you can capture this pawn right back. Um, if black defends that pawn, then you can defend your pawn. So uh, white's basically a pawn up and in good shape. He hasn't suffered any kind of uh, uh, structural damage for that, uh, for that pawn. Anyway, I took on um, c5. And this still leads to some kind of advantage, but uh, black gets some play in this line. He kicks my knight with d4. The knight could go to b5. Um, it's defended by the bishop, so the queen check doesn't win a piece. Uh, the knight can sit there, but uh, well, black can kick the knight with um, with a6. So the knight can hop into d6, so uh, it's a playable line, just uh, a little bit complicated. Uh, knight to e2 is okay as well. We're just uh, out of the opening book. Um, let's see. He took, and um, yeah, because I haven't played the most challenging moves here, uh, he gets to to keep his pawn. He doesn't doesn't end up being a pawn down, um, and it uh, would continue with some slight edge to white if I were to play c3 here. I needed to play a little more actively, um, but uh, well, I don't know. This line isn't all that attractive for white. You know, it, it involves uh, giving up the queens, allowing the straight of queens, but white still has an advantage because. Um, well, white's got a little more space, and uh, black isn't castling and may lose some move, getting that lose a move or two, getting that king to safety, but uh, and not a big deal. But after knight g3, actually, uh, the advantage switches, and black not only has survived the opening, but but has a slight edge, and he keeps it. I mean, he plays e5, so this is good. He's he's got more space on the center and, and a pretty solid center. So for the moment, uh, black is doing fine. I got a knight f3. He goes knight c6. Go a3. I'm preparing to kick that bishop, and he plays uh, a5 to stop me. I wanna, I wanted to get in this b4 move and chase his bishop a little bit. Um, so I develop my bishop to d3. Blockades his pawn, defends my center. He goes knight f6. I castle, and he castles. Let's see. And now I played bishop d2 here. Yeah, it's still good. And uh, he should uh, keep this. Uh, edge or this, uh, you know, it was either an edge or at least equal uh, through most of this. He should play uh, rook to e8 instead of uh, knight to e8. Knight to e8 is kind of a funny move, um, although it does have the idea of uh, moving this f pawn forward. But, uh, well, this extended knight maneuver leaves his center a little bit weak, and, um, and I start uh, going after it immediately with c3. Now, uh, the chess engine points out I, I could have played b4 here. This is not an idea that occurred to me, but it's it's pretty interesting and one uh, you should try and think about. It looks like b4 is losing a pawn, but the key point is this knight here is doing double duty. It's doing uh, defense of the uh, b4 square for the bishop, and it's also uh, defending <clears throat> the um, e5 pawn. So if I were to play b4 here, uh, he takes, I take, he can throw in this trade, get the rooks off, and then, um, you know, if he takes with the bishop, I'll keep trading. Anyway, basically the idea is I keep trading until he moves the knight, and then I can grab this pawn on e5. Let's see, he can grab my bishop. I take back 
But uh, anyway, I get a center pawn in exchange for a wing pawn, so it's a good deal for me. And uh, and uh, white actually has the better position here. So that would have been uh, better than what I played. But c3 also keeps an edge to uh, white, just going after this strong center that he set up. And, and of a, it's a logical move. Now, let's see, he played knight to d6. He should have played uh, maybe with another piece. Bishop to e6 is the chess engine. So this, uh, this, yeah, it just doesn't really have the time for this extended maneuver with the knight. So I can take here and, um, oh, he took back with the bishop. I guess he can avoid uh, that isolated pawn, but he has to give up the bishop pair. So he had to make some kind of sacrifice at that point, either either uh, ending up with an isolated pawn or giving up the bishop pair, and he chose to uh, give up the bishop pair. And so now I have a, a fairly consistent uh, advantage in this game. So I play uh, rook to c1, getting my rook on an active p square. He plays uh, queen h4. He's uh, going to try and get some counterplay on the uh, king side. And he goes a long way towards doing this. Let's see, I play on b4. I'm ignoring it because I didn't really see where his king side play was going at the moment. And uh, the chess engine also thinks that there's nothing really going on on the king side. But he makes um, a pretty good case here. He plays f5. I take it and then he trades it off and then uh, gets the pawn back by taking with his bishop. So he did manage to get his pieces off the back rank. So that's an accomplishment. Yeah, keep taking. Um, but he's left with um, uh, an isolated pawn. So I still have an advantage here. And, um, and his attack is still not that strong. So the Chess engine is completely unimpressed and wants to just uh, take the pawn. B takes a5 is a chess engine recommendation. I was playing a little more cautiously. I was saying, let's put the bishop here, defend the f2 square, and chase away this annoying knight. And there's always this knight. Knight f3 check idea. And particularly, uh, we well, played rook h5 first. If he had played in this position, um, rook to d8, that might have developed some interesting threats. Um, but he played rook h5. Let's say I blocked with h3. And now he played rook d8. And now uh, it looks like he's got this rook lined up against the uh, queen and he can move the knight with check. But it turns out my queen can just take the knight <laughs> if, if it tries to move with check. And he doesn't have any other great discoveries. So in fact, the, uh, the chess engine is not at all afraid of this uh, uh, discovered attack along the d file and once again just wants to uh, grab a pawn and says uh, white is winning. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't want to have to uh, deal with all of that, so I, I traded the knight off. This still keeps an edge to white because he's still left with uh, this weak pawn here. He, he took... Um, so now he's improved this pawn in a way. It's still an isolated pawn. It's still weak, but it's a passed pawn now. I can't um, stop it, whereas before it was stopped by my f-pawn. So actually that, that probably helped black a little bit. Uh, let's see. I went with the check. You know, I could have played queen f3 immediately, but he could have chased it away with his rook. So I, I deliver the check to chase his king back. And uh, yeah, king um, f8 uh, gets gets the king into trouble. I have a queen check here, and I can bring my rook in, and, uh, and it gets tricky for uh, black. So king h8 is actually the correct move here. And now I come over here, queen f3 stops him from playing rook to uh, f8. But, uh, well, he could have tried... Oh, not yet. He's, he wants to put a rook on the f-file, so he tried this move, rook h6, with the idea of playing rook f6 and, and gaining control of the, um, the uh, f-file. Um, the chess engine is not impressed with this maneuver and says that black should really take this opportunity to uh, uh, trade off on uh, b4, resolve this tension here. And I could just take back, or I could try and continue the attack with rook to c7. This is a very tempting move. Let's see, he takes... There's a chess engine line, and um, let's see. I play rook to d7. <laughs> this is a cute move. He can't take the rook because his king will get mated uh, with queen f8 if he takes the rook. So, uh, so the rook comes over here to defend, and then I can grab this dangerous pawn. And, uh, well, black at the moment is still a pawn up, but these are all kind of weak pawns, and uh, my pieces are active, and his attack has been uh, kind of shut down by the fact that this rook is now back in the corner. So um, uh, this is good for uh, white. But um, but that was best play for black. So I mean, I think maybe that was about even, actually. But uh, that was uh, 
It was, I thought White was still okay. Uh, let's see. He played Rook H6, and now the engine gets, starts to give a big advantage to White. I come in with Rook C7, so I can get make some threats on the seventh rank. He tries a Rook G6 first. Um, you know, this pawn is pinned, so his queen might take there if I'm not careful. His queen might take on H6, although at the moment it's defended by the queen. So I can go ahead and take on B7. This is all good. He plays um, D3 here, and uh, I bring my Rook over to D1 to stop it. Once again, there's this uh, Rook D7 idea. He can't take the Rook, and I can round up the pawn. But uh, Rook D1 is good enough. I pushed on to D2, and now I take advantage of this tactic and just grab the pawn. And at this point, uh, I think I keep a winning edge for the rest of the game. Although there was actually um, a drawing opportunity near the end. So this is something um, you should watch for. Uh, when there's a lot of force on the board, um, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit tricky to play. So you have to move your pawns forward very carefully. It looks like a two pawn advantage should be winning, but I was a bit careless at certain points. So uh, let's see. I'm doing okay at first. I just, um, let's see, he played rook c8, getting his rook away from the threat, and uh, I just dropped my rook back to defend the king. He went uh, rook to f6 to chase my queen off the f-file. I go queen g3. I'd be happy to trade queens here, and uh, black wants to keep the queens on. So um, let's see, I go rook b to d7. I'm going to trade off a rook pair if I can't trade off the queen, so he drops his rook back. So I've kind of beat back the attack, and now I just need to... Oh, I'm sorry. He played rook c to f8. Yeah, okay, so he keeps the attack going. Yeah, I was sort of hoping he would, he would move the other rook back, but and now he's got this threat on my uh, f-pawn. Um, so I play rook to d8. I want to at least trade off one pair of rooks if I can. He goes queen to h5. Back. Queen to h5. He doesn't want to allow the queen trade. And uh, so I do take off one pair of rooks. So we're down to one rook and one queen each. And I go rook to e1. His queen was hitting my rook. That was that queen h5 move hit my rook. Um, and now he takes here. I take back. So I have two extra pawns, this one over here and this one. And I uh, still should be winning. Let's see, he goes h6, so his uh, king doesn't get mated on the back rank. That's a good idea. I go queen to d6. goes queen to f5. And I go uh, rook to f1. He's lined up on the f-file, and I have to uh, have to take care of that f-pawn. Um, let's see, he goes rook f6, chasing my queen. I go queen c5. And he went queen e6. And I went uh, b5. And uh, yeah, this is the first of those moments where um, I was being careless with that pawn. And let's show how I should have played. I should have played something like rook to c1. And... Um, the idea is um, then I can say he moves the king. Then I can push on with b5 if he harasses my queen. I can move the queen forward. And if there's this exchange, uh, my rook is behind the pawn. In the game, I played b5 immediately. I didn't move my rook to the c-file first. And here he had the opportunity. He could have played that rook f5 move. I probably would have played queen c6. I mean, that's one of the better moves according to the chess engine and it helps me get my pawn forward. But actually that pawn is going nowhere because after the exchange, he can put his rook behind the pawn. And now um, my rook cannot defend that pawn. And the three pawns to two all on one side of the board is uh, a book draw. That's a drawn position. So this was really um, Black's chance to, uh, to draw the game. And it's all because I, I pushed that pawn a little too incautiously. I really needed to prepare it with a move like rooks to c1. So anyway, this line exists for the next few moves. Uh, he has the possibility of, of doing something like that. Um, but instead he played rook g6. He's, he's got some threats he's making against my king. He's actually threatening to take the, uh, the h6 pawn utilizing that pin. Um, let's see, I went king h1. Um, there is a funny line, another computer line, for example, uh, where uh, instead of uh, moving the king, the computer wants to play queen to c2. It's uh, a clever defense. Uh, something you should think about these kind of tactical defenses. Sometimes they're better. He can't take the pawn now because uh, his rook is hanging. So that's just not an option. 
Um, he should probably try something like rook to g5, and then, um, well, then I can play rook to d1, and now I've got this threat against his king because my queen is on this uh, very good diagonal. So, uh, so these threats are enough to uh, to deal with his his potential threat to uh, my king over here. Kind of funny. Anyway, I played king h1. It's a simpler way of dealing with it, but it's still now he still has these ideas of uh, rip to the fifth rank and doing this trade and getting his uh, rip behind the pawn. Uh, but let's go on, and in in, we'll get to it yet to his last chance. Let's see. He played queen to um, e4 here, still avoiding the trade and piling up on my uh, g pawn. I play rip g1. Um, he goes rip to g5 now, hitting my queen. I go queen c6. And this is really his last chance. Here he went uh, rook to h5. Okay, and this also just blew it. Uh, rook to h5 left his queen hanging. but um, So he's probably in time pressure or something. But uh, here was his last chance, and he could have actually taken my queen and then played rook to c5. And this is, as I said before, this is a, a book draw. It's three against two all on one side of the board. So um, it's fortunate for me, I guess, that he was a little low on time or moving too quickly, whatever. Uh, anyway, he went for this, and I took his queen, <laughs> and, uh, and he resigned. So it was an interesting game. I actually had had the advantage for quite a bit of it. But, uh, well, you have to be cautious in those end games. You really have to uh, take your time and, and slow down and make sure it's uh, safe to uh, push those pawns forward. And also, you know, look for those tactical ways of defending. Um, okay, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon.